Good day to one and all from Kit Kat and me. Hey, good morning everyone. <laughs> no comment from the Kit Kat gallery. Hey boy. Um, right. Here we are once again with this piece and uh, let me just get into it and uh, and anyway I hope everyone is 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 well uh, let me where should I start this morning I actually want to start start working with this this little area over here getting some detail going there uh, right here let's do that then let's do just that Incidentally, a, a query did arise um, um, about these dolosa, um, and I don't, I don't think I kind of really made it, made it that clear. But but they, these are in fact, you know, these aren't unique in their concept. They're unique in their design. The concept of of uh, the core tetrapods were were around for some decade or so, at least before these. Um, but it was it was the fact that 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 these particular kinds of tetrapods were were designed um, far more simply. Um, in other words, tetrapods were, were they, they four sided. They four. They've got four legs to them. Put it that way. These ones were f far more simply designed, in that the guy literally took a broomstick, made it into an H, and then turned the one turned the one side, the one end, um, and that's that's where this that's where this design stemmed from <clears throat> originally in its. In its concept, so um, perhaps these guys hadn't even heard of tetrapods. Uh, you know the fact that they were that, that they existed, because you know we didn't have we didn't have Google, we didn't have Wikipedia, we didn't have all of these things that uh, in the nineteen fifties that, or perhaps in the nineteen early nineteen sixties when I mean this. These dollars were designed in, in 1963, so you know there wasn't any of the the information available like there is today in, for for research. And these guys, these were fairly, I mean, simple. Um, uh, I mean, these guys were were with um, what you call it, the Harbour Authority. Um, they just were. Thinking things through, um, yeah. I mean, sort of. Eric Merrifield was a harbour engineer, and uh, the guy who actually actually came up with 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 the idea, um, Kruger, um, was uh, was kind of his sidekick, and um, well, they worked together. Um, he might have had an, an engineering degree or something to that effect as well, but but. May or may not have heard of tetrapods, but nevertheless, um, just to make it clear that 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 uh, that was the that was the deal um, that the actual concept of these great big blocks that really allowed for water to flow etc um, that could be placed together in such a for in such a manner that they allowed for dissipation of water all that stuff um, that concept was it was was around not that these guys who designed the dollars are necessarily knew of them I don't know maybe they did I haven't researched that far but uh,
it is interesting nevertheless, isn't it? So just creating these flat sort of angles and whatever. I'm not getting, I'm not being, trying to be particularly accurate here as to the shapes and what have you. Just these, you can kind of make them out though, however. Sometimes, however, my eraser tool is used literally for erasing. <laughs> very, very seldom in my case, but but here we have an opportunity to do exactly that, and and uh, that's what I want to do. So it does an admirable job when it's required. This is what was its original it intended purpose. So you can pretty much clamber on these things all the way down to the to the water level, and uh, a number of fishermen do. Uh, there's loads of fishermen in this area um, that, that that use the because the, obviously the, there's um, the fish come to feed off the the, the life um, that exists all around the base of the, the, the you know b below the below the waterline of these of these Dolosa um, which obviously rises and falls with the tides um, no, 
Right, so we'll we'll complete this piece tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we shall complete tomorrow. Kit Kit, what are you doing? What do you want to dig into here that you haven't seen a million times before? Who knows? But cats will dig, won't they? Eh? As I have said, subtle changes, angles, what have you here. Just a slight darker shade presenting a facet. Just here and there. This one even darker. So I'm using my compressed charcoal to depict the, the very darkest of of, of, of spaces in contrast are you happy now to lie in a box <laughs> so typical of a cat kit cat you're not a real cat though <laughs> So, as you might tell, if there's any engineers amongst those of you watching, <laughs> I'm not getting my octagons exactly correct, which is also artistically okay. I have the license to do so. As I have said, made mention of a number of times, I'm not making a technical drawing here. It is an observation. It is an acknowledgement um, of these things. I mean, how many, how many times, how how many artists actually make these man-made big blocks of concrete, these tetrapods, a an artistic feature? I don't know. It doesn't matter whether they do or they don't. I am 
simply giving them their their due um, that and as I've said it's about an observation um, of of structure of of man-made versus ocean versus natural um, and of this in terms of form um, and spatial um, presence um, the, the, geomet the, the geometric shapes versus this kind of um, soothing easy kind of background backdrop just a, a, a to me just a, a very interesting interplay which I chose to depict and only because I'm drawing attention to it you would really notice the the, the discrepancies in terms of the actual geometry um, so it is it is somewhat verging on on the ab abstract, uh, this this artwork. Uh, it's not a pretty picture. Oh, well, intention. It's not. A, it's intentionally not a pretty picture. In other words, it's not a your atypical landscape type of artwork. However, I think it is. It does have its it, its attractive qualities in what I've explained. These uh, these great big blocks of concrete do uh, do present a a uh, sense of solidity. Of immovability once 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 decided once they've reached their place of of uh, of rest um, they don't shift or they shift very little if at all so there's that sense of sense of solidity and and dependability and 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 also support so they, they, they do su they support growth they support nature in many different ways providing homes for other little creatures that reside within their dark depths cats rats you name it they'll all be living in here All somehow feeding off the opportunities presented here for growth. <coughs> Which I find really wonderful.
I've been using predominantly uh, contact crown here, but let me just find where my <laughs> oh, there you go. sitting in plain sight. I want to. I'm using my chalk pastel to enhance this one panel, this one facet, bring it out nice and starkly. This one will be much the same. Just actually rather get a semblance of accuracy <laughs> with this uh, Notice I've gone this way with my pastel and I'm rubbing it crosswise so that I'm cross blending the white, spreading it nicely a bit more, making it a little bit more subtle and then right that's that one. We also have a, a nice, uh, where did it go? Where did I just put that damn thing? Goodness. <laughs> did I, I, I just lit, oh, there it is. Good Lord, man. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Please, if you see me, if you see me wanting to slice my ear off, do stop me. Lord, or well, in fact, even if I if I start if I start painting sunflowers or something, stop me immediately. Tell me to cease and desist. Desist. I really don't want to go that far. Yeah, we have <clears throat> a slightly different texture because and, it, and it's very subtle both concrete this is this is the this is the the the, the edge of the, the uh, in other words we've got a pier that's been, that's been built 
big concrete, uh, a big concrete pier on either side of which these dolosa have been placed. Now this is the top, uh, it's raised to about so high, the wall of the, of the pier that we may be kind of standing on to look down, um, down the dolosa. So we've got a slightly different texture to this, to this cement because this will be reinforced concrete. Uh, not to say that it wouldn't make any real visible difference, but um, it also has a different, slightly different, um, the way it's be, the way it's being cast or formed or uh, you know poured. The concrete has been poured into these slabs and they've been placed, etc. So a slightly different texture um, that I want to just kind of work with a bit here. And we've got some subtle little patches or cracks and things that have taken place here. It just, just breaks up this smoothness of all of the, the surfaces here. This is what, these are details that I'll also spend tomorrow getting into what our last for our last session course this is in the immediate foreground so it's really close so um, there'll be you know I want to I want to make a little bit of a song and dance of, of a, a bit of texture going on here and uh, you see our main our main characters in this are that one and that one <clears throat> um, for obvious reasons these are the kind of the closer the closer ones that, that show the that show the shape of the do, of dolos better to better with to better effect. Uh, right, so that's back to back to this one. Okay, that's that one, that's little facets here. So each little angle that, that pops up, each little, uh, little, I say little, um, <laughs> um, well, 80 ton little, um, these are massive. Um, but each prong that, that, that pokes up at a different you can you, you can get the idea of how these how these things fit together so wonderfully so jumbled and yet and yet they lock in place 
they really they really settle settle in place incredibly well such that they form a much more powerful stronger um um, barrier to the sea than, than what any flat wall would do by a long shot. And you don't need an engineering degree to, 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 uh, to see why. Just a little bit of imagination. And it's also quite a good illustration of why I use the charcoal, the compressed charcoal, the Conte, white and black, Conte crayons, and the pastels, white, um, so we've got their different, their different um, uses definitely show up in this piece more than others, perhaps. Because where I need, where I need a mid-tone white, um, I'll use like here, for example, on this facet here, I'll use a uh, Conte crayon, white Conte. It doesn't give that nice, that that solid. Um, that more solid white, which this, this, and this do. Um, I've got another one over there. So, and then next to that, I've got well, I've got two different two different variations of of charcoal, uh, the same charcoal but just different pressure. So I've made it blacker over there, over here, over here, most of. And then where I've got a really deep black there, 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 um, I've used my compressed charcoal, which which gives me that that inky black. So instead of using them in conjunction with one another, I'm now using them um, adjacent to one another. So it shows a bit of my madness and why I do what I do, why I've chosen to use these these. Uh, these materials on one of the on one of the art websites at least on one of the art groups on Facebook the other day this question was was asked well it was basically somebody was saying that interesting an interesting choice of materials um, how do they work together and how do I lay them down etc so yeah now you can start to see why how they work together. I don't know how I even, I didn't maybe ch chose, I didn't, I don't think I chose them through design. Uh, they just happened to be what presented themselves. And I started working with them and I thought, okay, those work nicely together. And so there we are, Bob's your auntie. Bob is your uncle, but you know, we're not being gender specific here. Bob in this instance is identifying female. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Time. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Have we got any more work to do up the top there? A little 
ちゃって。So I, I, I do use my reference image a wee bit in this、uh, just, for, just for getting the, some of the angles right and so on. So that I kind of just keep an eye on what I'm doing.、Um, Color wise, quite a deviation. You have to be so goddamn scratchy. Jesus. Okay. Get you squashing the whole bloody box here, man. Jeez. Hey? Come on, man. So, there's going to be no major sort of surprises with this piece、um, <laughs> come tomorrow.、Uh, just a little bit more clarity, definition, etc.
know if you will be able to to see the subtle variation of of tone here with this with these with this shadow area they are very 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 subtly different because there's both cast shadow and change in surface uh, and facet going on here I just want to be quite get quite descriptive with that they also need to be quite subtle because they are hardly discernible unless you look very closely Yes, so this is what I shall be working much more closely with tomorrow is these little, just just bringing it all together with line, a little bit of line work. So it just, it just tidies up nicely and all kind of make, starts to make more sense in a way. It's, this is also quite a stark reminder because they are magnificent. It's, it's, it's a, despite the fact that they are still tetrapods, um, they are still quite unique in their design. Uh, as I said, not in, in, in design rather than in concept. So um, they're quite unique in their design, but and I feel that uh, it's it's never it's never been made clear as to as to what the intention was. But these these were never patented. This design, the specific design of the Dolos was never Dolos was never patented. Um, whether that was on purpose or because of the fact that they actually worked for worked for the the harbor authority and um, were therefore working during uh, uh, designed these uh, these things during during working hours which would then preclude them being able to patent the idea uh, so the, that's one theory the other theory is that is that they uh, they wanted them to be available for anyone to use for the greater good of all, which is a which is a very which is a romantic idea. Believable could well be that. I mean, we we, we, we still have to we still have to understand that there are some human beings out there who actually do things for the greater good of all, rather than just for their own greed and for their own self gain. Um, not too many of them, however, and that's what brings disbelief into the equation. Nevertheless, 
It is a stark reminder of the need to patent ideas. If you have a really good idea, if you have something, and, and yeah, these guys probably just initially thought this up to, to, uh, to make a difference at, um, at, at, in, at, at East London Harbour, the harbour entrance. Um, but then they caught on this wonderful design. Of course, they, you, can't, you can hardly miss the damn things. They're so huge. Um, and they caught on. And I'm just interested to, just to know why the, the, the Harbour Authority didn't actually patent. The, the design department didn't uh, patent the idea. Anyway, whatever. Nevertheless, they've, they've, they've spread internationally. Uh, the design is used throughout the world and for various purposes as well. Um, and now both of these gentlemen are deceased. So there's no finding any answers today. Which is a pity, but anyway, be that as it may, just is a good reminder to, to if you have a really good idea, um, and then at least, at least get, at least get a few pending patents. Um, get stuff in place. Get, get yourself covered. Um, whether it's ultimately for the greater good of all is up to you then to choose as to how to share the idea, the concept. You might not even want royalties and you might, you know, so, but the idea remains yours. Nevertheless, and can't be, cannot be, um, taken by anybody else from you. In other words, nobody else can actually get the credit for having designed these things. Because there's, as it is, there's, there's uncertainty as to who takes credit for the design of the Delos, whether it was in fact Merrifield or Kruger. We don't know. We will never know. Um, Kruger, in, at least uh, Merrifield, initially took took. Um, took the uh, um, design, the, the, the acknowledgement for himself. Uh, but then at a, at a stage, I think it was in the 90s, um, Kruger actually came forward to say, well, no, this is not necessarily the case. That is that, you know, he, but he also had a, had a very important role to play in, in the design of these things. Um, perhaps more so than what Merrifield had. Anyway, <laughs> that's why you have patents, so that any of these arguments, sometime down the line, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because like the, my, one of my favorite bands, uh, Spandau Ballet, <clears throat> you know, that they now, they're now in, in, you know, that they've broken up, they get back together, they break up, and because of, these kind of arguments as to as to who's who has the rights who the, 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 and um, where they had start where they had started out was at school bunch of kids getting together forming a band just for the sake of making music man um, and then years down the line they're they're making millions and millions of pounds or dollars or whatever and they're, they're globally internationally famous uh, as they should be and but now they don't have an, they don't have a uh, 
an agreement in place from the outset. So, you know, well, you know, at what point do you? It's the same thing. So now they're in, now they're in conflict. Now they, now they're saying, well, some of them are saying, well, you know, let's just let's just get together, and make music for the sake of making music again. Fair enough. They're, they're older and perhaps wiser. Maybe they will. And uh, at least there's an openness to to doing so. Many of these guys, they have these have these have these fights and they part ways they have then they get into slinging matches ah, ah what's the point what's the point of life when you start with that attitude the narcissism and greed raises its ugly head because money has be, become involved, money has become the priority, not the art. I mean, as an artist, I of course I hope to sell my work, and and but that's not why I do what I what I do here. This is not why I ch why I churn out these pieces so prolifically, uh, you know, at a rate of one artwork a week. Um, no, that's not why I do it. Uh, why I do it is because of the love of doing it, <laughs> of the love of, the, of, of art, of the love of, 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 of sharing my work, of uh, I don't know, it's, it's this, it's the, there's a challenge for me in this. I, I can, I, the only way I guess I can explain it, it's the challenge of trying something new and always improving and all that sort of thing so it's it's very little about it's much less it's much more that than it is about actually making money even though that is of course there it's, it's a fact you know i do want to sell my work i do want to i do want the recognition hell yeah i'd love to be able to sell each piece for fifty thousand us dollars um and I think I might get there one day, perhaps. But that's not my objective here. That's not why I sit here. And even if I am, I'll still be sitting here sharing my work. Um, that's never gonna. That's never gonna take over as the, the 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 main reason why I do what I do. I'm still going to sit here. And I'm still going to share my work because I love doing it. the process get it got it good There's Mr. Kick. Ah, there he is now. Oh, am I going over time? No, about two minutes left. Sure. Nearly got caught up in traffic again.
Right. Right, I think we're done for today, guys. Um, let's leave it at that. And we'll, we'll bring it through to completion tomorrow. There's more work I have to do on the sea. Of course, the clouds. Um, but by and large, we're making good progress here. Um, that the land, that's, that's uh, a land on the horizon line there uh, needs to be a little bit lower. Um, those sort of things. Um, but yeah, so... We need to sort this. Out. Yeah, there are a couple of things that need to sort out in terms of in terms of their uh, their contrast, subtleties of of of, of such. Um, but by by and large, I'm happy with this progress here. It's coming together well. Um, yeah, I didn't know really what to expect of of this piece initially, with it, how it would work out and 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 whatnot. But hey, it seems to have been coming along nicely. Anyway. So, people, thank you once again for uh, for for joining me today. Um, uh, thank you for sharing my work. Thank you for your comments and and your encouragement and your support and all that stuff. Um, so, I uh, I really appreciate it. Always. Anyway, uh, oodles and oodles of toodles, and have a fantastic day ahead. And do tune in again tomorrow to the tube and uh, as we come bring this piece to fruition. Yeah, so take it easy guys, be good, be safe, bye. <laughs> and always doodle.